an HTML web page, even using JavaScript, isn't able to access your computer's file system. And this is a security privacy feature. But sometimes your browser needs to carry information across from one page to the next, such as a login ID or items in a shopping cart. So your browser manages a small amount of disk space called the cookie store for saving information used across pages in your session. A cookie is just a text string structured with terms like this, name equals value, semicolon space, name equals value, semicolon space, and so on. You can access and change the data in cookies using JavaScript. When your session ends, the cookie store for the session is freed up, that is, deleted. All the cookies in a session have a shared cookie store, so all documents in the session have access to all cookies in the session. Let's see how this is done. Each document has a cookie property, which can be set or accessed using JavaScript. To set a cookie, document.cookie equals username equals Steve, or document.cookie equals user email equals plus, document.getElementById em.value. So this is a literal string, user email equals, followed by a control element's value. Retrieve the cookie string, c string equals document.cookie. Some notes. When you set a cookie, you specify the cookie name, followed by an equal sign, followed by the cookie value. You may have spaces around the equal sign or not, but when saved, any spaces around the equal sign are removed. The resulting string is added to the character string that makes up the cookie. All cookies are saved as a string of name equals value sets, each separated by a semicolon, then a space. For example, username equals Sir Anthony, semicolon, space. User email equals s at q.com. The last cookie does not have a trailing semicolon space. When you add a cookie to the cookie string, if the cookie name is already there, your value replaces the existing value. Cookie names are case insensitive, and cookie values must not contain spaces, commas, or semicolons. When you access document.cookie, you get the cookie string, which consists of all the cookies in the format described before. You have to use some JavaScript string handling functions to extract each cookie, and we'll talk about this later. When you submit a form, in addition to the variable sent from the form, the cookie string is sent back to the server in a network transmission header. This way, CGIs can see cookies and change them. When the server responds to a form request, the current values in the cookies are returned to the browser, which updates the cookie string. When would you use cookies? Well, cookies allow you to pass values to all pages in your session. The variables you use in forms are not available across all pages. You could store variable values on the server in a file or a database, but that does make, not make the values available automatically to all pages in your session. Cookies can work with values outside of forms. So, for example, as your user links from page to page, the cookie data is available for use on all the pages, with no need for forms to be submitted. You can do work across pages without having to use CGI programs. Cookies can even work locally. That is, you can set and get cookie values even if you aren't connected to the Internet. Not a lot of use, except it means that in some cases you can test your cookie-based logic without having to upload your pages to a server. Note, there are alternatives for client-side storage of values, and these are discussed in the advanced course. Cookie expiration. As mentioned earlier, a cookie is normally deleted at the end of a session. However, you can request a cookie have a longer lifetime. This is done by adding a semicolon followed by max age equals some value. For example, document.cookie equals P 
PWD equals GR32JY6 hashtag semicolon max age equals 900. Basically, the value for max age is the number of seconds that should stay around. The default is zero, implying delete at end of session. And your browser defines what end of session means, usually either when the current connection is closed or when the browser is closed. Working with cookies. When you retrieve the document.cookie string, you only get the name value pairs, separated by a semicolon space. You won't see any of the other optional parameters, such as max age. The cookie string can be long, and it may contain cookies you don't care about. So I built three functions to simplify working with cookies, and I put these functions in a small file in your My Web Files directory named cookies.js. And what follows is a description of the functions, how to invoke them, and also an exploration of the code. And you can skip the detailed explanation of the function code if you like, but you will want to use these functions from time to time. First, I declared four variables used in the functions. var work array is a new array, var cook part is a new array, varg rc equals quote quote, and var max a equals quote quote. Now the functions. Set cookie. To set a cookie, you invoke it by passing the name you are giving the cookie and the value. If you want to control when the cookie is automatically deleted, you can specify a third value, which is how many seconds should elapse before the cookie is automatically deleted. For example, Part ID equals document dot get element by ID parenthesis item dot value set cookie item one part ID or assuming that there's a temporary password built in tem pwd and there's 900 seconds in 15 minutes you might do this set cookie temp password comma tem pwd comma 900 so a temporary password that will expire in 15 minutes. Delete cookie. Delete a cookie. You delete the named cookie. You invoke it passing the cookie name. For example, delete cookie temp password. And get cookie value. Extract the value of a particular cookie. You specify the name of the cookie you are interested in and the function returns its value or minus one if the cookie is not found. For example, current user equals get cookie value parenthesis you name. If not current user, alert no user ID found, form submission canceled, return false. Otherwise you're going to return true. This may look a little counterintuitive at first, but let's think about this. You get your cookie value into current user. And the next line, if not current user. Well, current user is either a value or it's minus one. And minus one is false. So we're asking if it's not there, if it's not true, if it's false, then do the alert and return false. Otherwise, return true. Next, and here's the optional part for you. We'll examine the code for each of these functions. And afterwards, we'll look at a couple of examples of using these functions. The set cookie function. The definition is function set cookie parenthesis name comma val comma age. And we have the three lines of code. argc is set cookie dot arguments dot length. Max a is parenthesis argc greater than two question mark quote semicolon max age equals quote plus age colon quote, quote, semicolon. And document.cookie equals name plus equals plus val plus max a. Well, let's examine that. First, notice how you can find out how many arguments have been supplied to a function by specifying the function name dot arguments. It provides you with the array of all the arguments. And because it's array, then you can say dot length to get the count, the number of elements in that list. 
then we have a new construct here. Return equals comparison, question mark, true value, colon, false value, semicolon. That is, if the result of the comparison is true, the returned value is what is to the right of the question mark. If the result is false, the returned value is the false value. In our case, the true value is the string, semicolon max age equals, followed by the value in age. The false value is just simply quote quote. So max a would contain quote semicolon max age equals quote third argument. The false value is just a space, so max a just contains quote quote. Then when we set document.cookie, we get either document.cookie equals name equals val semicolon max age equals age if a third argument has been supplied, or document.cookie equals name equals val if no third argument has been supplied. The delete cookie function. Function delete cookie parenthesis name and the code is document.cookie equals name plus equals semicolon max age equals zero. This function is so simple one could do away with it, but I find it is easier to remember than the detail of adding the max age argument. Actually, there is a subtlety here. Notice that we said cookie equals name plus and then quote equals semicolon. So what we've done is we've changed the value of the cookie to be null, and then we have the max age equals zero. Get cookie value function. The code function get cookie value parenthesis name, and the actual interior code work array equals document dot cookie dot split parenthesis quote semicolon space quote parenthesis semicolon for i equals zero semicolon i less than work array dot length semicolon i plus plus cook park equals work array bracket i dot split parent quote equals quote parent if name equals cook part bracket zero return cook part bracket one otherwise return minus one. Here's where we are most grateful to have a function do the heavy work for us. We have to work with two arrays which you may recall we defined at the beginning of the cookies.js file and we also use the new to us split function. The split function breaks a string into an array based on the, based on the characters that define where the string should be split. In our case, you will recall that the cookie string is a series of name equals value sets separated by a semicolon space string. So we start with work array equals document.cookie.split semicolon space. That's what we're splitting it on. So at this point, work array has each name equals value set in a separate member. That is, work array bracket zero contains the first name equals value work array bracket one contains the second name equals value and so on. And the length property tells us how many members there are in work array. So that our for statement steps us through all the members in work array. And for each one, it assigns into cook part work array i dot split equals. That is, we split the member, which is name equals value, into the name part, which is in cook part bracket zero, and the value part, which is in cook part bracket one. Next, the function looks at each cook part bracket zero value in turn to see if it matches the name entered as the argument of the function. Once there is a match, the function returns the value in the corresponding cook part bracket one member, and you're done. If there is no match found, the function returns minus one, or false. Let's look at some examples of using cookies. Example one. Get a username in order to enter a book club site. The idea is not to look up this name in a database, but just to have a name that can be used to address the user 
as he or she goes through your pages. In this example, we ask the user to supply a name. It can be any name they like. The code will set that into a cookie named inName using the setCookie function. This is done in the page called bookclubsignup.html. When the user enters a name and clicks OK, it passes control to FDA Book Club Home. HTML. And this page uses get cookie value of in name and puts the value into the page heading. And the user will also see a list of books available and also a link to a page where they can indicate they want to donate a book. On the donate.html page, again, the get cookie value of in name is used to place the user's name into the page heading. There is a form with a number of fields to fill in, and when the user does this and submits the form, the simple CGI get PHP routine is invoked, displaying variables and the current cookie string. So we observe the creation and retrieval of a cookie value across HTML pages and the passing of the cookie string to a CGI program. And here's the code for the sign up page. Just a couple of things to point out. We have the script element bringing in cookies.js. And on the um, paragraph down where you enter a username, we have an on change set cookie invocation. And then on the last paragraph, if you click on OK, you see you get sent to FDA Book Club Home.html. And that displays this way. So when we go down to enter a username, let's put in Cookie Monster. And we click OK. And here's our next page. Notice that Cookie Monster is in the header. And here's the code for FDA Book Club Home. And we'll look at some of the details. Once again, we reference the JavaScript file cookies.js. And now, here's something really pretty complex. In the body element, the onload event, what we're going to do is document.getElementById who, first child, append data, get cookie value, in name. So we're going to get the cookie value from in name and append that to the first child of document.getElementById of who. Now, right below that in the H1, there is a span, id equals who, and span. So what the onload is going to do, it's going to put the value from the cookie after the word high in the H1 header element. In the second page of the code, just a couple of quick things to point out. First, that select element, which lists the books, and then the link that will take the user to donate.html. So here we are in the home page, dropping down the select element. And now we take the link to donate.html, and it looks like this. So let's look at the code for donate HTML. It's not really too surprising. Again, we have the script element pointing to cookies.js. And our body has the same kind of onload, grabbing the cookie value and putting it in the header as we did on the previous page. The second page has not too much to it, just a form element with the action being our simple CGI get.php. And the third page is just standard code. So here's our donate.html. And we want to fill in the form. So we'll make up a full name and supply a fictitious uh, email address and also a hypothetical phone number. OK, and our book title, Saved by a Drone. And the author, Michelle Drone. And the publisher 
is Better Books. So we get our information and we click Submit. And that's going to invoke our CGI. And here we can see our query string and our cookie. Example 2. Calculations using cookies. Finally, here's an example of passing cookie values from one page to another that works both locally, runs just in your browser with no internet connection, and on your server. The first page, circlework1.html, gathers information about a circle, the length of the radius, and the unit of measure. And then you just link to the second page, calcsirc, .html, which calculates the circumference and the area of the circle on your demand. To be sure, this could all be done in one page, but the point here is to demonstrate passing cookie values between pages. So let's look at the code of circlework1.html. The first page is nothing particularly special. Perhaps you'd notice what's not there is a script element pointing to cookies.js. But that's about all we have to say for this page. The meat is on the second page. On the second page, we have a field set with two paragraphs that are asking for information. First is for the radius, and it's going to take that on change and grab that and put it in document.cookie. And you'll notice the ID of RAD ties back to the document.getElementById. And then on the next paragraph, we have a similar situation where we're asking for the uh, unit of measurement. So same kind of on change, grab the into cookie, the value of this input element. Then in the next field set, there's a paragraph which asks you to uh, click to go get the calculations done, and it's pointing you to calcsirc.html. And it displays this way. Now take a look at the code for calcsirc.html. The first page is pretty ordinary. Second page, we do have our script element for cookies.js and a new script. We begin by defining some variables. R is going to hold the radius from the cookie value. U is going to hold the unit of measure from its cookie. And S will be a string composed of the radius followed by the unit of measure for display purposes. Then C will hold our circumference and A will hold our area. Now we go into a function we call do the math. We're going to use the built-in constant math.pi for our calculations. And circumference is the radius times 2 times pi, and the area is pi r squared. So we do those calculations, and then for both of the circumference and area, we reduce it down to two decimal places using the toFixed method for numeric values in JavaScript. Next, into the variable res for result, we put the circumference plus a space plus the unit of measure, and to area result, we put the area plus the word square plus the unit of measure. And then we use these familiar constructs to put the results of our calculations into elements in the body, one with an idea of result, the other with an idea of result too. And then we have the end of our head, and we get on to page 3 of calcsirc.html. Page 3 starts right off with exciting stuff. In the body element, we have in the unload four statements. R equals get cookie value of radius. U equals get cookie value of unit. S equals R plus space plus U. And then document.getElementById inval.firstchild dot append data s. So we gather our cookie values, build the uh, expression, and put it into this second paragraph where we have the id of inval. Then in our field set, we have a paragraph where it says click here to perform the calculation, and on click it does our function, do the math, which you may recall puts the results in result 
and result 2. And we're done. So let's run this, and here we are, and we specify our radius to be 12, unit of measure inches, and then we click to go to the second page. And at the top it tells us we had their 12 inches, we click to perform the calculation, and it gives us our circumference and area. In this session, we covered creating, accessing, and deleting cookies using document.cookie and three functions, set cookie, get cookie value, delete cookie. We looked at new JavaScript capabilities, function name.arguments property, function name.arguments.length property, the split function, and the math pi property, and to fixed method. Using cookies to pass data among pages and passing cookie values to CGIs. Coming up, we begin a three lesson stretch discussing HTML tables. See you there! Thank you.